Hey guys, my name is Simsy. How are you all doing? Welcome back to some more FIFA 22 here today on the channel. We're going to be starting a brand new season as Manchester United on FIFA's Realism Mod. Welcome to Season 3. So, if you like the sound of that, feel free to leave the video a like and subscribe if you are new. A lot of changes are going on at Manchester United. Man, it's crazy to think that it's been a couple months since I've done Season 2 of my Manchester United career and how much things have changed at the club. The major thing being that Ole Gunnar Solskjaer was sacked and now Ralf Ranić is the manager of Manchester United. And we're going to be adopting his tactics and philosophy and hopefully we can bring in some of the players linked with him. I also feel really motivated to do Season 3 and this is what's happened in the prior two seasons. We've won two Premier Leagues, two Domestic Cup and one Champions League. So let's meet the team. Season three, three seasons in to my Manchester United career. So I was playing a 4-3-3 a lot last year. We're going to switch things up and make it a 4-2-2-2 to adopt Ralph Ranić's formation and then eventually his tactics. So for this season, I want to try and win a Champions League. I want to try and win my third Premier League in a row and try and get a couple of domestic cups under my belt. However, it is going to be a lot harder than the last two seasons, because now this time around, we're actually playing on FIFA's Realism mod, so all the player faces have been updated, and yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. I really can't wait. Also, I've kept all the saves for my career mode series that I've done on the channel, so I wouldn't be opposed to maybe going back to my Real Madrid career series, and doing another season there. Unfortunately, this save was created prior to the January transfer window, so we're not going to have new updated signings. However, I will be planning some career modes over the next coming days and weeks to have January transfer signed players, as we are now, now in February of 2020. How crazy is that? So, for this season, I think this is my best team. Rashford, Felix leading the line. Fernandez and Sancho being the cams. Pogba, Goretzka in the midfield Hivert, and obviously we want to change up the tactics as well. Uh, Oblak is currently in goal. We want to try and adopt the tactics to sort of fit similar to what Ralph Ranić and his vision is doing um, at Manchester United. But man, this <laughs> might actually, like, th another season in the future within the next six months could change again if Pochettino gets appointed as Manchester United boss. Juan Bissaka, Shaw on the left and right. Kimpembe, Varane in the, the defence. And obviously, Oblak in goal. But we've got a lot of ageing stars as well. We might need to do a bit of a rebuild for this team as we've got some ageing players who are nearly hitting their 30s. All right, so let's go have a look. So squad depth-wise, we probably could do with another striker. We've still got Ronaldo on the books. He's 38 years of age. He's going to be playing on the bench. Jao Felix is his replacement. Okay, we've also got Rashford here now as well. Ansu Fati is at the club, so he should be our new and up-and-coming Superstar Palistri is currently out on loan at Lazio. Medaweke is currently out on loan at Juventus. He now has a game face in FIFA. Darlo will probably look to loan out as well. But thanks to FIFA's Realism Mod, he's got a really good looking game face. And even some of these other guys as well. But here is the squad depth. We're pretty good at the moment. We've nearly got two or three players for every position. We've still got Dominic Sabozle on the books. I might actually look to loan him out. Bruno Fernandes, 92 rated. is crazy in Season 3 now. Still got Jude Bellingham, uh, Donny van der Beek as well. It'd be fun if we could loan him out to Everton. <laughs> if we could get that deal done. Uh, Paul Pogba is now 30 years of age, 89 overall. So maybe some of the older players, if we get huge offers in, I'm more than interested to let them go. Goretzka, 89 rated has had an amazing time at the club he's like one of my favorite players in this career series Tieth Chong as well is currently out on loan I uh, actually loaned out Scott McTominay to Real Madrid because he just wasn't getting much game time he's now 84 rated at 26 years of age I do want to try and keep him at the club because we haven't got too many defensive midfielders uh, we've also got Lamptey as well 22 years of age 80 overall I want him to be the replacement for Wan-Bissaka but he hasn't really shot up in stats Dalo is currently out on loan at Real Madrid Williams is still on the books Wan-Bissaka 25 years of age now, 88 rated, and Kimpembe, Pal Torres, 
and a couple of others make up the bench. Oh, also as I'm using the PC version of FIFA, I can actually dive into the database and look at some of my uh, youth academy players that we've recruited and look at their max potential. So check this out. Uh, uh, Joey Bailey here, 57 rated, can go up to a 90. And Brian Jones can go up to an 87 rated. So we're definitely going to keep those guys on the books because they've got huge potentials. All right, so let's have a look at the players that we might have to move on in the future because you've got to remember we're three seasons into this career series. I want to try and keep Ronaldo till he retires. I might actually look to move on. Oblak, uh, Varane, Pogba, Bay as well. We'll just have to see about those offers though. But here is Joey Bailey, left back, right back, 17 years of age from America. And we've also got Jones here as well. So we'll try and keep them on the books. All right, so we've got a couple of regens that have popped up here. Leon Kaspar, 20 years of age, 85 overalls, currently a free agent. That is a huge player that we can bring in on a free, and we might look to loan him out. Uh, Gabriel Neves currently plays for Burnley. He is uh, Thiago Silva's region. Edwin Ali, who currently plays for Calgary, is Zlatan Ibrahimovic's region. Uh, Cisco Vega, uh, Cisco Vega, I don't know which region he is. Um, Spanish striker, really could be anyone. But we do have uh, Chesney's pre-gen as well, because he's currently still in the game. You also forget as well that some of these players could be pre-gens, um, which can often... Oh, not the free agents ones, but some at clubs. For example, Chesney hasn't retired. However, his pre-gen has entered the pool, which is kind of cool that they've added. But Liam Kaspar has signed for Manchester United. 20 years of age, 85 overall. This dude looks like an absolute goat. All right, I've also spent 25 million pounds on Burnley's Neves, so we can secure the next Thiago Silva, 17 years of age, for 25 million pounds, 90 strength. Check out Gabriel Neves. I've also gone and signed Zlatan Ibrahimovic's regen, Edvin Ali, and we're trying to gobble up the next generation of players for United. Six foot two, left footer. There's Zlatan's regen. All right, so we have 400 million pounds in the bank. We nearly could splash the cash and bring in Frankie De Jong, one of the highest players currently in this save. I'm also tempted to move on Oblak and maybe bring in Donnarumma. He's a player that I've really admired and wanted to bring him on. We just haven't had the money, let's say, and maybe Delict as well. There's a couple of others. All right, so as we're playing on FIFA's Realism mod, I'm actually going to play all of the friendly tournament because it, we're playing the Florida Cup. Like, we actually play with license, a licensed cup competition and stadiums, which is really cool. Like, check this out, the American Challenge Cup here, but it's technically the Florida Cup. All right, so we're going to play the preseason. Then we're going to play the UEFA Super Cup against Inter, and then we should as well have the... First match of the Premier League season at the end of today's episode. So I want to test out Ralph Ranić's 4-2-2-2 formation. There's the team. Varane Kimpembe in the back line. And we face Juventus, who of course are fully licensed and modded in in this realism mod. They've got Lamar, Tierney and Carvajal, which is interesting. Alright, let's get stuck into... Juventus on ultimate difficulty. Oh, they're actually also playing my lonee, Madueke. But let's go for the first match of Season 3 of this Man United career. Jao Felix on the ball. Finds Paul Pogba. Back to Jao Felix. A couple of nice one-two passes. Goretzka. Oh, he's hit the post. Can he get the follow-up? He can! Oh, Man, oh man, just before the 45th minute there, we scored the first goal of Ralph Ranić's new Manchester United career series. The rebuild is on, boys. A terrible strike in the end. Hits the crossbar, and the ball falls right to Goretzka, who picks it up. Oh, it's really good intelligence there with the follow-up in the Florida Cup. We're 1-0 up against Juventus. This is really going to test us for the season. I want to see how we can compete against these top elite European giants because we need to strive for a Champions League campaign this season. Look, let's be honest. This is not a fully... Oh, here we go. Rashford, a uh, fully strength Juventus, but Rashford seems to be making a mockery of their defense, going to the byline, 
Looking to bring it back in. Casper leaves it. Pogba to Bruno Fernandes. Oh my god. What intelligence there for that quick lightning reaction. And it's 2-0 thanks to Goretzka and Bruno Fernandes. Man, the 4-2-2-2 Ralf Ranić, Manchester United formation. Seems to be working out. Nice ball in from Pogs, 30 years of age. He's turning 31 this year, still got it. And obviously we've got his blue hairstyle in. I even noticed as well that Jaden Sancho in this Realism mod has updated tattoos as well, which is really awesome. But we're currently now 2-0 up. Sancho, back to Goretzka. Wambasaka looking to join the attack. Oh, he's slipped through Ronnie. Liam Kaspar in the box. Kaspar! Oh, he's beaten Chesney somehow. It's 3-0. The boys are oozing with confidence going forward. They're playing some fantastic football. It's 3-0 just before the 79th with Cristiano Ronaldo making a last sort of end of second half appearance but we've got to be careful with Ronaldo he's got fantastic finishing in FIFA so we're going to try and use him sparingly but oh Kaspar just clipped it under Chesney and it's rolled on in to the back of the net you'd think Chesney would be retiring well we've, we're looking at his uh, pre-gen technically so maybe the AI knows something I don't know <laughs> maybe they're looking to um drop him sooner rather than later all right so we end the first match of the brand new season three on five as realism mod with a 3-0 victory over juventus ronaldo actually played quite well in that last sort of 25 15 i think that's where i've got to play ronnie because i can't play him week in week out as he's 38 years of age he's a specimen but uh he's not that good let's say all right so, Kaspar scores on debut. I'm really happy about that. Man, he could be like one of my next forwards going up. Alright, let's get stuck into Barcelona. Let's have a look at them in Season 3. Oh, Tanganga has moved to Leeds, but Ben White has joined Rasenball Leipzig. A pretty astute signing for them. Uh, I don't really recognize too many players. They've still got Pjanic in the, uh, the starting lineup, which is quite funny. Uh, Tristegen, Koulibaly, um, Frankie De Jong. Well, this would be a good scout report. All right, let's have a look at Frankie, how he plays, because I might actually... The thing is, we need a replacement for Pogs. Someone that's a bit younger. You know what I mean? Goretzka. Oh, finds Jaden Sancho. Go on, Jaden. Unselfishly finds Goretzka. Man, he is just finding so much space going forward. From central midfield, it's the German international, the former Bayern Munich legend, Goretzka, makes it 1-0. Oh, wow. Because especially with our 30-plus years of age players, I didn't sort of continue on and follow on from my point. It's like Pogba isn't getting any younger. He's not going to get any better from what he is. We've got to give game time to the younger players that can grow. So I think we might actually look to bring in Frankie De Jong for Pogs. But we can still use him as a substitutional player. He's still very quite good. Pogba. Round in the show. Finds Zhao Felix. Been a little bit quiet in this friendly tournament. Zhao to Pogba. We're 2-0 up against Barcelona. And the boys are playing some fantastic football. Look, there's a lot of space in these friendly tournaments because well, look at the squads. They're actually, it's nearly a bit of a half and half. They've got the first team that's going to be playing week in, week out in the Liga and in the Champions League with a mixture of under-21 players. And unfortunately, Ter Stegen there has managed to let through another goal. Pogba with a nice little step over there. Supreme intelligence. Zhao with a nice one-two pass. Continues his run. And Paul Pogba after me criticizing him slightly, has scored a magnificent goal in the United States, in Florida. Paul Pogba makes it 2-0. Barcelona looking to react. But what a crazy window they've had. Adama Traore in, Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang as well. As Frankie Dion goes forward, Frankie manages to smash it past Oblak. And couldn't keep the clean sheet in this Florida tournament. But Frankie going forward there has a little bit of the Goretzka about him. 
I, to be fair, I think Goretzka was scoring a lot in, like, season two. Just the way he progresses the football forward and goes forward. He's done a similar thing there. Frankie De Jong has now made it 2-1. Oh, Kim Pembe getting just muscled out of that one. Pure strength and grit by the Dutchman. Overtopples the Frenchman. 2-1. Second half now. Oh, Ichisko Vega has gone to Hertha. That's a shame we couldn't get that deal done. Rashford, Pogba, nice couple one-two pass. Terrible pass in the end for Tostegen, who quickly tries to get the ball out. Oh, Wambasaka with the interception and tackle. Barcelona on the back foot here. Come on, boys. Capitalize on this. Play smart. Make sure you pick your passes. Oh, and Pogba does. Bruno Fernandes makes it 3-1. My God. He is so, so good in FIFA. Bruno Fernandes, El Capitan of Manchester United, makes it 3-1 after Barcelona's little resurgence. What a blinder, blinder <laughs> from the Portuguese international. Bruno Fernandes, eat your heart out. Oh, my God. What a f spectacular finish. By the Portuguese man. 3-1 <laughs> in Florida. He's loving the sun. He's loving the Miami weather, let's say. No, oh, Barcelona on the attack. In Kunku. Oh, surprising that Barcelona have brought that huge talent in. Frankie. Oh, I don't know who that was. But Barcelona made it 3-2. Was his name like something P? Panku or something? I don't recognize some of these names. They could very well be La Masia graduates. Or the next and up-and-coming talent in Spain that Barca has managed to pick on off. I don't know what's going on with Barcelona's financial department. I swear the last year we've all been told that they're bankrupt. There's nothing they can do. And they've gone and had one of the best transfer windows in January out of most of the clubs. <laughs> but they've made it 3-2, though, um, which is going to complicate things in the Florida Cup group in our pre-season tournament. Uh, oh, okay, so he looks like he's just another player. He doesn't look like he's from La Masia. Hmm. I wonder where he is originally. Oh, Goretzka can't get the tackle off. Come on, guys. They've just scored a goal. You can't let them creep in like this. Oh, my God. We've capitulated at the back. Come on, boys. Switch on. Switch out. I'm kicking water bottles on the touchline. I'm tapping my forehead ferociously. But we've managed to slip a really good match here. Ah. Okay. So, forwards-wise, we're creating a lot in our midfield and forward line. And we're converting as well. The defense is where we're lacking. Which is not good, um, particularly against a hybrid youth slash first team Barcelona team. We shouldn't be conceding three, so maybe I need to move on Oblak. Hmm, I'm going to have to think about it. Alright, that's probably it. 3-3. Three, three. That's why I don't mind playing these friendly tournaments sometimes. So you can sort of look and assess the team. We might need to restructure the defense. Maybe bring in a couple of new faces. And maybe goalkeeping as well. I'm going to have to think on it. Okay, so in the second match, in, uh, the third match in the group, we've managed to beat uh, Seattle. 2-0. Alright, so now we're in the semis. We've been drawn against PSG as there's an El Clasico in the other. Alrighty, so let's play this one against PSG Paris Saint-Germain. Milinkovic Savic has gone to Liverpool. Sabitzer has left Bayern to go to Juventus, which is quite a big deal. But let's get stuck into Pochettino's PSG. As Mbappe, Messi and Neymar lead the line, which is quite huge. And we also can scout Donnarumma in this match as well. Alright, let's get stuck into PSG. Harry St. Germain. They've got Nicolas Schuller in the defense, which is hilarious. I can't wait to see where he goes in real life in the summer, as his contract is expiring, of course. Mbappe, Verratti, Julie Vinaldum to Messi. Come on. 
Vinaldum oh, makes it 1-0. To be fair, just looking at that team, Yuri Tillemans, that amazing front line, they're looking to try and win this friendly tournament as Gini Vinaldum gets the ball in. Hakimi celebrating. Verratti. This is going to be a really big test for United. But yeah, Varane and Wambasaka. Varane's 30 as well. We've had three amazing seasons out of him. But maybe it's time to move him on. Same with Oblak, I don't know. Because we brought him in for David De Gea. But he's one of the highest rated goalkeepers in the game. Ugh, but we're 1-0 down. Maybe I'm overthinking it. We'll have to assess after this friendly tournament in the States. Come on, United. Maybe some of you are thinking I'm taking this tournament way too seriously. But it's really testing how we're going to go this season. Because I haven't actually played with Ralph Ranick's tactics in FIFA. But it seems to be working as Jaden Sancho puts in an amazing ball there to Jao Felix. And what a beautiful goal. An outstanding pass and a spectacular finish to top it off. Jao Felix. Look, he's been a little bit quiet in this series. Maybe the forward line, to be honest. Like, in the sense of, like, Rashford and Felix getting on the score sheet. We're actually relying, well, sometimes Ralph Ranić's formation, like sometimes Fernandez and Garret and um, Sancho going forward can actually convert more goals than the strikers. But we'll see how we go. Sometimes it actually goes to, uh, it sometimes goes a little bit lopsided into like a a four-two-four, essentially. If like there is a huge urgency for an attack. But it's still 1-1. Alright, so, on the 92nd minute, it's going to go to a penalty shootout. Hopefully the boys can be calm enough and can step up. 1-1. Super close. We had 9 shots. Arguably should have won, to be honest. But Donnarumma was the one that's probably kept them in. So... Penalty shootout, Neymar, Mbappe, Tillemans, Messi, Suchek, Henderson, Marquinhos. And Fernandez steps up. Where's he going to stick it? He goes straight down the middle. A little bit audacious by the Portuguese international. Come on, Oberlak, switch on. Watch out for Neymar's pure chaos and trickery. Neymar goes to the left. Oberlak picks it. Ron Ronnie steps up. He wants to take the second, and he does. He converts. That's why you kind of need someone like Ronaldo in the squad. Oh, my God. Mbappe and Neymar. Hubris has cost them. Oh, Kaspar's stepped up. I wouldn't... Oh, I don't know. Boys, you should have... Some of the leadership group should have stopped him doing that. Tillemans. Oh, my God. To be fair, PSG are missing a lot. Jaden Sancho can actually win it here if he converts. But to be fair, we've already missed one. Jaden... Oh, how's he tucked that one in? He's actually left a little bit of a floater there, putting in the left. But Jaden Sancho scores the winning penalty for the semifinals in the Florida Cup. We have now booked ourselves a place in the final, either against Real Madrid under Carlo Ancelotti or Barcelona under Xavi. But that was like a bit of a chip there. Oh, my God. To be fair, I don't know... If Donnarumma could have done much better than that. I reckon if he hit it quicker, he might have actually reacted more. But Jaden Sancho, with his tattoo update. You see Spider-Man and Sonic the Hedgehog there. But now, we have made ourselves into the semis. Or uh, the finals, from the semis. And we've been drawn against Barcelona. They won El Clasico. Last time it was 3-3. This time around, hopefully it's not a similar scoreline. Silva has joined Atletico Madrid. Pretty smart signing by them. And I don't know who that is, but Brighton have signed a £20 million AC Milan player. But here we go. Manchester United facing Barcelona. Depay, Usman Dembele still at the club. They're even looking to cancel his contract at the time of recording. I don't know what's going on with Usman. It's so back and forth. It's kind of crazy. All right, here we go. Let's get stuck into the final of the Florida Cup. We're going to get a huge amount of money from the States if we can win. It could be in the tens of millions. Bruno Fernandes. 
just before the end of the first half, going forward, finds Pogba. Pogs to Rashford. Zhao. Oh, my God. I know you're passing it around a lot, but oh, we've managed to create something from nothing there. It's 1-0. On the stroke of the 45th, and Jaden Sancho is oozing, oozing with confidence in his new role. I sort of obviously played him off the right. I even tried him off the left last season. But he's managed to sneak in there. Maybe one too many passes for my liking. But they know the best way to get guaranteed goals against Barca is to get as close into the box, the penalty box, as you can. And I know how much that means to Jaden. He's come and give me a big old hug there. <laughs> it is 1-0 against Barca. But you never know. This could actually essentially make those pre-gen and regen signings we did before in the window for free. If we can get like nearly 10 million pounds, upwards of 20 from this club, um, cup competition, particularly in like sponsorship deals or something. Like you never know. Ter Stegen trying to bring it out from the back. In Cuckoo. Frankie de Jong. Finds Memphis Depay still at Barcelona. Oh, what a tackle by Bruno Fernandes dropping back. Actually, no. Why did it... Oh, I think it was Kimpembe, actually. Now Bruno's picked it up. Sure. Interesting little chip. Back to Kimpembe with an elegant pass. Pogba finds Kaspar. Back to Rashford. Sancho. Here we go, Bruno. Oh, my God. What a piece of play. I actually didn't know where they were going to go there, the boys. I was nearly thinking Bruno was going to release the shot. But they've slipped it in to Liam Kaspar. Although he's got a funky looking haircut, he kind of reminds me of the way he moves and his silhouette on the football pitch. Kai Havertz is probably his likeness. Yeah, who is that? I just Sometimes you can make an educated guess. You just, sometimes you don't know about pre-gens and regens, but who do you reckon he is? 85 overall. Really quite young. Maybe it was Kai Havertz's pre-gen. I genuinely don't know. Or it could have been like Muller, to be honest. Whoever got like released, potentially. I don't know. It's a free agent, so it complicates things. But he looks good. Rashford. 2-0 up, Goretzka, Sancho, Kaspar. He's been really good. Who needs Mason Greenwood when you've got Kaspar coming up? He could be his replacement. Ricky Puig, or Puj. Puj. Diong, wow. In the 90th minute as well. Okay. Frankie Diong has been by far... Barcelona's best player on the pitch. Just his movement. And I really liked... Although Donnarumma lost on a penalty shootout, which is a little bit worrying. But the amount of shots he stopped, he, he managed to save eight shots against us, which is huge. And Obelak has been a little bit suspect at times. Yeah, like he should have done better there. Is that Gimoresh? I don't even know. It could be. It looks like him. Is he playing for Barcelona now? Obviously, Gimoresh signing for Newcastle United in real life. But that's it. 2-1. We've managed to win our first trophy of the season. And I've learnt a lot from this Florida Cup in those matches against sides like Barca. Juventus, and now PSG. I think I'm happy to go with Felix and Rashford for the Premier League season. I would like them to increase their goal output. So, ideally, we might add some competition there. Bruno 
And, of course, Sancho, being that attacking midfield role, are more than capable to adopt that. Obviously, Bruno can just slot in. However, Sancho might take some time to convert. I might actually convert him into a cam, technically. Uh, Pogba and Goretzka. Goretzka's 28. He's still got a couple of years left in him. I might look to move on Pogba and maybe just halve his game time playing him off the bench. Defending-wise is interesting. I... I don't know if Varane has got one more season left in him at the top. We might need to look to replace him. Kim Pembe is good, but we've got the financial might now of like 400 million pounds that we can actually make some huge signings. Like we've got the money. Previously, we were only operating with like uh, probably only 100 million, 200 million. So we can actually buy the players that are worth like 200k now because sometimes they can be literally out of your reach. Some of the top five players in the world. Um, with this system now, ironically, it's nearly being the same as United in real life. I don't know how good Luke Shaw and wan are going forward. They are quick. They're more defensively minded. To be honest, I actually might need attacking wingbacks for this system. Like, literally, I reckon if we replace both of them, we might actually score more goals. If there is an opportunity... To upgrade my fullbacks, I actually might take it in this now that we're playing a new system. So, if anything, I might look for a midfielder in today's episode if we've got time, and maybe I might get some just just changing the fullbacks because obviously the players suited last season's four three three. This time around, we've got to change things now that we're playing Ralph Ranick's formation and tactics. So we've won the Florida Cup two one. Under pretty good circumstances as well. Alright, I think it's time to make an inquiry to Barcelona and potentially Donnarumma. There's a lot of players on this list as well that I'm interested in keeping an eye on. Uh, so unfortunately we couldn't get Chesney's pre-gen. But let's negotiate with Barcelona. And let's have a look at what they even want in the ballpark for someone like Frankie de Jong. I think my player face has changed as well. Uh, my manager face has changed slightly. <laughs> because of the realism mod. It didn't look like that when I originally made it. So he's worth 200, 125 million pounds. So what does Chavi want to say for that? 170. We've got the money. I would nearly be better off doing a swap deal, but I think maybe just paying a, a straight out fee might be better. 150 million pounds for Frankie De Jong. I'm nearly tempted to do it because he will be worth twice that in a couple of years. He's 26 as well and 91 rated. So that's five decent seasons with him in FIFA. In real life, it's more. A five-year deal. 420,000 pounds a week. Let's try and drop that because that's insane. To 270. Uh, it looks like Frankie Diong will be the first signing of Season 3 of my Manchester United career series. Let's go. Frankie Diong unveiled. And Christian Romero has uh, gone back to Atalanta from Spurs on that loan deal. But now he's joined Chelsea on an official deal. And Neves has joined Real Madrid. A couple of big signings for Season 3. Alright, so... Naturally... De Jong is the Pogba replacement. There's also a lot of players I would like to loan out. In the window. But now we can focus on transfers now that the friendly tournament's gone. We've still got the... Um, Community Shield and Super Cup to come as well. Look, you know what? I'm going to give Frankie his debut. I'm actually going to play this one um, against Manchester City. It's the Manchester Derby. You've got to take it seriously whenever it pops up in football, of course. Graven Birch has left Ajax to join AC and Bakayoko has joined Lazio. That's interesting. It's probably like a similar kit as... Uh, he played for Napoli, of course. But there is Pep Guardiola's team, three seasons in. But let's get stuck into Manchester City. Going to be a really good test for us. Torres, Carrera, Sterling leading the line. 
Rodri in the defense. All right. First match back in England after the US tour. We're in Wembley. We have the final. Oh my god, guys. What a boring match. There was like no highlights there to even show you. It's a nil-nil draw. And we go to penalties in the FA Cup. Sorry, not the FA Cup. The, the Community Shield. Both teams are going to have a quick pep talk. Ironically, Pep's going to have his talk. I'm going to have my talk. But, yeah. Really disappointing. Nil-nil. It's going to go to penalties again. All right. I've got the confidence for us to go through. We've won a couple of penalty shootouts. De Bruyne steps up. Straight down the middle converts. Oh, Black does go the wrong way. Fernandez, the captain, steps up. Terrible penalty in the end by him. Chose the right way. Akadi playing for Man City. Goes straight at Oblak. As if, as, if, as if he plays for Man City now. Rashi steps up. Converts. 1-1. One, one. It's all tied up. Torres back from his spell at Barca. Puts it into the left. Ronaldo. Cristiano. Converts, of course. He's 2-2 two two on penalty shootouts. Phil Foden. Oh, straight at Oblak. Paul Pogba steps up. Still doing that crazy penalty animation. But he puts it top left bins after losing his spot to Frankie. And Raheem Sterling has to convert here. Or otherwise, United win. And he does. He converts bottom right. Nice little chip. Kind of similar to Sancho's last time around, ironically. 3-3 all tied up. Sancho needs to convert. Oh, and he misses off the crossbar. Edison taking a penalty, really? Oh, he's hit the post, though. <laughs> Kimpembe's going to take this one. Yeah, maybe some of the defenders weren't confident enough. Why did Edison step up? Kimpembe, can he do the business? He does. Kempembe gets the winning penalty this time around. And Manchester United are two for two on penalty shootouts. Crazy scenes. <laughs> As we win on pens. Look, I was nearly tempted just to sim completely the Community Shield. As it is a friendly cup match for all intensive purposes. But we've been drawn against Man City. Who, of course, won the FA Cup last year. But not a bad result from the boys. Two trophies, although they are minor trophies, in the sense that the Champions League, the Premier League, and the FA Cup are major trophies. I'd nearly say the EFL was nearly a, a minor trophy, to be honest. But Bruno Fernandes now lifts the uh, Community Shield, the FA Cup. Community Shield for the first time this season. Good. <laughs> We're showing really com really good confidence and resilience to go into a final and can and convert and win. Hopefully it continues over the entirety of this season. That's what I'm ideally hoping for. All right, so now we've got the UEFA Super Cup against Inter. Should be good. I'm actually really curious to see Inter's team. Wow! Timo Werner has gone to Barca. They're spending that Frankie de Jong money instantly. Martinez, Dzeko. Dzeko's still playing. Vidal is still at Inter. Uh, Saul, Barella, Ocampos, Orban, and Radu in goal. Handanovic is probably retired, to be honest. That guy was ancient before. He's like ancient at the start of FIFA. <laughs> Let alone in Season 3. Fernandez, looking to work the football world. Finds Jao Felix in the box. Back to Bruno Fernandez. Nearly gets closed down. Sancho, nice step over. Nice little bit of skill and trickery. Jao, Fernandez has been tackled in the box. 
as the boys aren't going to appeal for the foul. It might have to go to VAR. What a back heel to Frankie. Ball over the top. Rashford! Oh, my God. It's taken until the 90th minute to us to get a goal. Another close and cagey match. I just feel like the weakness in this team is probably the fullbacks. Oh, my God. Rashford has been a little bit quiet as well. But what an insane goal there in the death to beat it past Radu. And we might be able to go three for three. The Inter fan token. That's hilarious. We've got some crypto advertisement going on. Or is it technically an NFT? But Marcus Rashford, when you need him to step up, he can score a clutch clinical goal. We desperately needed that. But now, we've got some more proof that we can win in a European final context, at least. But I've got to admire Inter's team and, and their rebuilding. They have bought some decent players in. Borello, they've still kept... They've even kept some of the previous players on the books, like Lautaro Martinez. How has he not been snapped up within three seasons? Or Nico Barella. And they've still kept Zeko. They've kept the older players and they've kept... Like, they're players with huge potentials as well. And they've brought in players like Lucas Ocampos. Inter, you've done well. Okay, Manchester United are now your, your UEFA Super Cup champions. Thanks for seeing me. Oh, no. Bruno wants to go. I don't see my future at the club. Oh, as Liverpool have done. What? Oh, we've got to stop that. Liverpool have launched... And paid his release clause at 180 million pounds. Oh, he's maybe using this just to bargain himself a new contract. But we can't let Bruno go to Liverpool. That would be insane. Like 400k. I'm nearly happy to give you. To be honest, to keep you here. The captain nearly wanted to go. Alright, so looking at the August window. Southampton, Newcastle, Aston Villa. All right, let's get in the stuck into the first match of the season against the Saints. Martial currently at Arsenal. Amati's gone to Southampton. But anyway, let's get stuck into the Saints. Who have they still got? They've obviously got Amati, Giniapo, and a couple of others. I'm surprised they're still in the Premier League with that sort of, I'm not going to lie, shambles of a team. Anyway, welcome to Old Trafford, the Theatre of Dreams. First match of the Premier League season. Let's go. Ball in, Fernandez. Goretzka. Go on, Goretzka. Great goal. 1 0. Just before the 12th minute there, and it's the German international to make it 1 0. Dude, he's had an amazing preseason tournament, and now he's converted that form in England on the Premier League stage. It's 1-0 against Southampton. Oh, my God. Rashford gets out of the way, and it's a top left finish off the crossbar, and Ralph Hasenhutl is not happy about that one. Goretzka. Scores the first goal of the Premier League season under my Season 3 managerial reign, playing with Ralph Rangnick's tactics. Southampton under the Turkish international. Oh, they've actually got Chutemeni. Ah, wow, that's a good signing. Oh, Marty with the tackle. Wesley, no. Oh, no, how have we done that? Ugh. 
Yeah, we, that might actually be the final straw. An outside-the-box shot by Unda, the Tur Turkish international. Oh, that's annoying. Oh, black. Oh, black. Oh, black. No, that was woeful. And Luke Shaw as well. Not even putting a block in. Not quick enough to get there. I don't know who he's hugging. An invisible man. But it's 1-1. One, one. Wow, what a sour note to end this episode off with. Because, yeah, he's got tackled there. Can't even... Uh, get over that 1-1 one, one draw. Well, unfortunately, guys, it's time to end the video here. Thank you very much for watching Season 3 of my FIFA 22 Manchester United career mode on, of course, FIFA's Realism Mod. Alrighty. So stay tuned for Episode 2 coming out so to soon of Season 3. Yeah, I've got a question to ask you guys. We've got a couple of holes and... Uh, Issues in the squad, let's say. So, strikers, we might actually need another one because uh, Rashford's and Jao's output aren't up there. Um, I'm happy with the cams. I'm happy. With, I'm really happy with Sancho and Fernandez after they got poached. Midfield's fine as well. I'm thinking I might need to bring in... I think I just need to get better fullbacks. <laughs> like, we've got the money. I think we would play better football if we could get two new fullbacks that are actually more attacking minded rather than defensive. We could even do with another center back and a new goalkeeper. So let me know who should that be. Anyway, thanks guys for watching. Stay tuned for more videos on the channel. I'm going to be recording a lot more over the coming days and weeks on this Realism mod. And I'm also open to going back to other career mode series, maybe playing as Real Madrid or Chelsea. And I also want to try and start some new series as well with a new updated, those new updated transfers. That'd be really quite cool. Anyway, guys, take care. I'm going to play the outro now. Goodbye. Unfortunately, it's time to end the video here. Thank you very much for watching. Check out my social media links in the description below if you want to stay connected with me. I also want to say thank you to this month's patrons and channel members. Victor K, Sebastian C, Jordan K, Caesar L, Brian S, Tao, Lion B, Kyle P, Tom C and White P. My name has been Simsy. Much love from Australia. I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye. <laughs>